Now we have been asked in the past uh, so many times how to repair or diagnose the fault on a riser recliner chair, this one electric. So the easiest thing to do is to come to the chair, check your controls. Sometimes what you'll find is this is slack causing an intermittent fault, this is a safety cutout so that a child can't play with it, usually hangs on a wee clip on here. That's your up and down button, light comes on, it goes up and down. This one, this chair is working fine, but the reason why we're doing this video is to show you what to look for. Uh, we will be putting the chair on its side, safely on its side, on the correct side, and we'll show you that as well. Now we also have here quite a large selection of different types of control boxes, motors, extension cables, handsets, etc. There's all different makes and models. For instance, a transformer here, you'll have the uh, time motion ones here, all different sizes. You need to check the back if you order any, how many amp an hour rating it is. There's this one here is a, a 2.5 amp, some are 2 amp, some are 1.5 amp. This is a Jewett one. Uh, the control boxes, all different shapes there. These are dual motor ones here. That's a different make altogether. That's a, a Jewett one. These are riser motors for the time motion, which work with those transformers over there. It's all different shapes and sizes depending on the stroke that requires the power and the type of chair it's fitted to. Then of course you've got a, a mega mat here. So these motors are fitted on the underside of the chair. We'll show you when we put the chair on its side. These handsets, you've got a celebrity one here, the old style celebrity one, you've got a Sherburn one here, that's a five button, you get a three button, same as that one there. You've got the Sherburn old style, which is no longer available, but this one replaces the new one. But you can't use that one on this one, so you need to get the right one for the right set. Uh, these are Restwell handsets, all different ones. That's just a couple. There's about 10 different ones on it. And when you're ordering handsets, you need to be careful of the DIN plug. This one has a five and there's a 90 degrees bend. This Sherburn one has a two, four, six, eight, and is a straight with a yellow band on it. This band's nearly coming off. We'll just put that back on. And that one will have eight as well. And those handsets will plug into here. That's where they plug into. Usually the handsets then plug into an extension lead. These extension leads are all different shapes and sizes. Some have got a, a curly bit on. That's for the scissor mechanism underneath. These are then tied around the scissor mechanism to get to the control box, which is there, and plug into that hole there. Extension cables, here's a different type of extension cable. There you can see that's that connection. And there's, and here's the other side of the connection here. That one there is suitable for that control box over there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the chair on its side, but before I put it on its side, I'll put the seat all the way down. Right, that's it down. Now I know the handset's on this side, so what I'll do is I'll put the handset in the side compartment here and lift the chair over on its other side. Now that's the chair on its side, you can see the motor, or what we call the actuator here. That's your actuator, and that's your transformer. This particular one is transformers fitted because it's an old one onto the motor. Nowadays you'll not really get that. You'll get an external transformer which is a low voltage 29 volt DC supply to the actuator which is the motor here. Now I've got the handset here. So this is what happens when I press it up. The motor extends itself and I bring it back down and that's it level. So the handset itself is in the pocket comes out in a hole underneath here and then it goes along the mechanism here quite difficult to see comes out underneath here and then into the control box i.e. transformer then it decides 
what the actuator actually has to do. The first thing we recommend that you do is to check to make sure that you have power. Your power supply is working, etc. Okay? Most transformers have a, a green LED telling you that there's power coming out of it. Okay? That's the time motion one's got a green LED. An Oaken one, Duet, an LED there. But we can also check here. I pulled the terminal out slightly so we get a good contact here to check the voltage. Now before I stick my voltmeter in here, I need to check what the output is. So at the back of the transformer, I'll tell you output there, 29 volts, 2.5 amps. So it's 29 volt DC, direct current. So I set my, my voltmeter to direct current, not alternating, because that's AC, that's what you have in the house. So it's DC. Take your terminals, put them on one on one side, one on the other, and the 29.3 volts. So I know for a fact we have power coming out of the transformer. Also, you want to check all the wires, all the connections to make sure they're properly connected. What can happen, and I have seen before, there's a slack connection in between here. This wire is slightly bent, and it's not making a proper connection. So that's it connected in. We've got a handset here. We'll try and work it. Still nothing happening, even though it's connected into the main control box here. Why is nothing happening? The Sherbin one, this particular one, has an on-off switch here. Let's switch it on. And then there's a power light here. So we know we've got power here. Some of the older, different handsets have a wee LED power light coming here. So when you press a button, that light will come on. An older Sherbon has a wee LED here. And another one, an LED here. So that's when you know you've got power. But I always recommend that you check all the wires, all the connections, make sure everything's connected. As you're moving it, pressing the button at the same time, move this wire here just in case you've got a slack connection. If you check all the wires and all the extension cables, which some of these have, because these are wired round about the linkages, check everything. Move all these wires at the same time you're pressing the buttons. You'll find very quickly if there is a an intermittent fault. You can't open the sheaths here to have a look at the single strands wire. This particular one is an eight pin in, so there'll be eight wires in there. So they're quite fine wires. There may be a slight fracture inside here. So keep moving the wires as you're pressing the buttons to see if, if the riser will work. Now you've checked all your power supply, your, your looms, your connection, your voltage, your power lights on. So you're quite happy with your power supply. Uh, some of the buttons on the handset are working, some are not. In this case, I know for a fact this is a new handset. But uh, for a scenario, you've had the handset for a long time and this button isn't working. Okay, This button leads through the loom through this connection here into the motor. So we know for a fact it's going up, but it's no going back down when we press it. So these two buttons are for that motor, and these two buttons are for this motor. So first of all, what I would do is I'd take this connection here and I'd move it about as I'm pressing that button. So you're pressing that button, you're moving about, it will start to work, then it won't stop to work, then you know for a fact there could be a slack connection here, you need to replace the handset. Uh, quite easy, we have these in stock. If that doesn't solve the problem, check all your connections again, make sure they're secure, and if you've checked all that and it still doesn't work, it's quite easy what we can do here. So, so we know that these two buttons work. Okay, it's moving that motor. This one works in the up position, but not back in the down position. So what I'm going to do is, as I say, I put the chair on its side. I'll take this connection out of the controller, put it in this connection here, and vice versa. Put this connection in here, because they're all exactly the same. So I pull it out, put this one in here, and put that one in here. So all I've done is, I've swapped everything round about. So technically speaking, these buttons now will operate 
the foot one, which is going to operate that motor here. The backrest is going to operate this motor here. Because the connection goes through here into a relay, which if I've opened one to let you have a look at, I advise you that you do not open it. Because number one, that will avoid any warranty you may have. If you don't have any, these are 20, 29 volt system. There may be people that can repair these, there may not. I don't really know. We just tend to throw them away. The amount of time and effort it's going to cost. It could be a faulty relay. It could be water contamination, etc. So we just tend to throw these away and replace them. So, we know for a fact this one's faulty. Now we've moved it from uh, the motor onto this connection. These two buttons here will work this motor here. So now, if I press this button up and down, and it's moving the motor, I know for a fact there's nothing wrong with my motor. There could be a problem with the handset, okay, because it's not working. But there could also be a problem inside the control box here that is not preventing it from working. So if I now press this button, and it's working that motor and if I press this button and it's not bringing it back down then I know it is a handset or it could be the controller because the relay inside could be faulty and just taking it one way but usually if it takes it one way it will take it back the other way as well as every time you press it you'll hear a click and that's a relay working so if you do hear a click on this it's most likely working and it's a handset that's faulty. If you're not 100% sure, I would order the handset first because it's a cheaper option of the two. So we hope this helps. If you've got any problems, any questions you'd like to ask, just give us a phone or an email us. Best of luck.